Hello and welcome. In this video, I'm going to show you how I shape bezel strips for stone setting. So bezel setting is a really nice setting that you can do on lots of stones. So you can see an example of it here. So it's a kind of flat setting that goes all the way around the edge. And we use something called a bezel strip to do that with it. And I can either set flat backed cabochons like this one that has a flat back and then a curved top, or I can set pieces that are slightly not completely flat on one side, like this one that I've done for that ring. So I use a few different tools, mainly pliers for creating the bezel setting. I'm not going to show you the whole setting. We're just going to talk through how to actually make a nice flush setting around it, which you then solder onto your piece. If you would like to learn the whole technique, then you can check out the courses on our website as well. So this is bezel strip and there's a few different kinds. It tends to come in three millimeters thick and five millimeters thick. So this is a five mil one and this one is three mil. This one is silver and this one is nine karat gold. And I like working in nine karat gold because it's a nice, fairly inexpensive way to add a little bit of gold to your work. So if you're making a silver piece, but you use a gold bezel strip, that just gives a nice touch. And this one is a not completed yet, but this one you can see it's got a silver back so I'm using mainly silver and then I've just added a gold bezel strip to that. And this stone will fit nicely in there when I'm, when I'm done with it. So you can get all different shaped stones. You can get ovals. So you can see I've created a kind of oval setting for that one. And you can get irregular shaped stones like this one, which is kind of half, I'm halfway through creating a setting for that. Teardrop is a really nice popular stone setting. So I like to do quite a few of those. Um, this interesting shape as well is really nice. So just learning a few little tricks and tips for how you can set them is really useful. There's also Marquise stones, which are kind of long and pointy. And I love this hexagon stone, which I've found recently. And I've started creating the setting for that as well which you can see there, which I've just kind of used my pliers to go around and, and start creating that. I'm not quite finished with that one. And you can tell because there's a little gap. So if you've ever got gaps, you know, you're not quite finished. And it does take a little bit of time with some of these to get a really nice flush setting. So the tools that I'm using, I'm using my pliers. Sometimes I use a pen to mark off uh, a different section that I'm doing. I might use a little mandrel to create shapes if I know that I'm going around, but I'll use that more likely to just get a kind of gentle curve to get started with. And I'll also use uh, D-shaped pliers for that. So without further ado, I'll show you a few techniques that I use to set some of these stones to create the settings. And hopefully that will be helpful for you in your jewelry making as well. So to start with, I'm gonna show you how I'd create a bezel setting for this lovely stone. So it's got a curve on one side and then it's got a sharp kind of edge on this side. So a few different things to consider there. So I always try and make sure that I don't have the end of my setting at a point because when I come to actually set the piece, it's going to put quite a lot of pressure on there. So when I apply my bezel strip and for this, I'm going to use a five mil bezel strip because it's quite a quite a tall stone. I do use three mil a lot. Um, so just a, just decide whether your stone needs the five or needs the three and you also might want to sand down if you want somewhere in between. So I'm going to place that in the middle of one side, just hold it nice and securely and do my first bend at the top just by pushing it with my fingers. Then that's got quite a nice shape to it but if I want to take it a little bit tighter I use my chain nose pliers to just get in there and tighten it. I often find it's better to make things tighter and then push it almost like over the stone to get the shape. And uh, with these settings, it is often a case of going backwards and forwards between doing it with my fingers, doing it with my pliers and getting a really nice snug fit. Great, so now that I've got that top bit pretty much in place, I'm ready to start working on the side. So I'm just gonna push down through the side Hold it nice and snug and 
pull the tail around. So it will spring open when I let go, but I'm at least getting the initial sort of shape of that piece that I want. Then I can start using my half round pliers to really work on that curved edge. And go back to the stone, shape it over the stone. So my aim is always no gaps and a snug fit. So now I can work on this corner and pull that a little bit tight. So I'm going to go back to my pliers. And this is my chain nose pliers. I'm just going to tuck that in with. So this process does take a bit of time. Don't rush it. It is important we get it right. I'm going to use my pliers to also mark out kind of more of an edge on this side. So next up, I'm going to mark with my pen where I need to cut this shape. Just where they overlap. And I'll take my tin snips. And just snip off. It's very easy to accidentally cut it too short. So if anything, I normally go a little bit too long, then I can always file it down. But if it's too short, then I have to start again. So I'm just gonna keep playing this for a little bit. And just, you can see the process is that I'm just basically shaping, going back and forth between different pliers. And I'm getting closer and closer to the shape until I am really happy and ready to go. My aim is to have a complete snug shape, which I'm nearly there. And my two ends, I'll file them down after I've done all the shaping, just a little bit, so that I'm ready to then solder it without the stone on its own. So I'm just going to keep working on that a little bit more, and then that one will be ready. And again, I should be able to fit my stone in nicely. Great, so next up I'm going to show you how I'd set a different shape. So we're going to go on to a teardrop because it's similar actually to the one we've just done but very slightly different and I'm using a finer bezel strip. This is three millimeters wide and it's nine karat gold so it is going to act a little bit differently. But a lot of the principles are still the same. I want to make sure that I've got my join on a flat side, so I'm gonna start by bringing this end over. Now, because this is a smaller stone, I'm gonna do less with my fingers and a little bit more with the pliers, because it's a little bit fiddly. So I'm gonna take my pliers and just do a firm bend for the top. And place my stone in, so it's not quite shallow enough. Need to go a bit tighter. And then I'm just going to hold my stone in place and curve the edge round. The nine karat gold is quite tough, so you've got to be really firm with it. And smaller settings do tend to take a little bit longer to do as well, so just a little bit more fiddly. But essentially the process with this is to start with the top, curve round the bottom and join them up. And again, I'll use my D-shaped pliers to get a really nice curve there. When I'm close, I'm gonna mark off where I wanna cut my piece.
And I'll just cut slightly to the side of that so I've got some room if I need to file it down. Then again, I'll just keep working as I am with these between my pliers and my fingers, taking my time, getting a really snug fit and filing down just the little edge before I take it for soldering. Final one that I wanted to show you is quite different. So if you're working with a square or a rectangle, we don't do it in quite the same way. I mean, there's different ways you can do it, but generally we recommend creating one side and then the other. So we're doing an L shape. So I start off by working out the length. And it's not always easy to get an exact length. because where the plier bend is not always 100% accurate. But we'll give it our best shot. And we'll just mark there. So that's the end of my stone. So I place my pliers just with that to the side and then go for a bend. And we'll see what that looks like. I can always straighten it and rebend if it's not the right length. So I'm pretty happy with that actually. It's, if anything, I want it slightly too long because I can always file down. So then I can go ahead and bend it a little bit more aggressively now that I know it's pretty much where I want it to be. And I can also mark here. Where I want to go. I'm just using my tin snips for these. If you're using a very thick bezel, like you're using silver sheet or gold sheet, you might want to saw them. It's the same process. So this is a little bit big, but not much. So what I would next do is just file down the ends one at a time until I get a really snug fit. And then essentially I'll solder, just taking the stone out for a second. I'll solder it without the stone, obviously, because I want to make sure that I don't damage the stone with the heat and I'll solder here and here to give a really nice join. And then I can either even solder it with a bit sticking out the edge and then file it off afterwards. But just do be careful with these very fine bezel strips when you're filing, because it's easy to, to file off the end. So that is a, a very kind of basic overview of how you create these different shapes. Um, spend more time on, on finishing and getting a really nice flush finish, uh, a bit like this one that I did before so really making sure that it's going to fit the stone that, that you've created and go in and out and um, again just the hexagon I think is a really nice one I did that in a similar way it's kind of a combination of the square and the oval it's like kept going round and using my pliers to just bend at each turn but I could do a bit more work on the top there so hopefully that's been useful. Best of luck with your bezel setting. It does take time. Try not to get frustrated with it. The main things are to make sure you've got a really nice join that you can solder and that you've got a really nice snug fit and that you don't have any kind of weak parts that are sort of where you're going to be setting it, where it's joining. So try and keep your joins in the center of a flat piece whenever you can. It's slightly different for the, st for the square shape or the rectangle, but other than that, they're pretty much the principles. So best of luck. Thanks for joining me for that video. I hope you found it useful. If you'd like to find out more, come and join us over at jewelersacademy.com for in-depth professional online courses. Bye for now.